Yo. Hey 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 yo. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, brown, I, could I could be, be violet blue, sky, I could be, I could be hurtful, sky, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. You watching Point Dexter Lounge? You already know. You're watching Poindexter Lounge for the unity. Why don't you set aside an hour or two? We'll have a few drinks and a cup of coffee I don't drink. Hi, you're watching Poindexter Lounge. I I'm choking on chicken. Um, hey, you're watching Poindexter. That's great. I don't. You are watching Poindexter Lounge. That's great. I don't. You are watching Point Dexter, thanks for the lights, Jay. Oh, turn a rose and call of duty. I smell like onions and you're watching Point Dexter. That's great. I don't. And now I'll make the point better. This joint's clever in the lounge with Point Dexter. So Point Dexter Lounge, you know that we can get it in. And now I'm headed up like I'm Led Zeppelin. Hi, you're watching Point Dexter Lounge. Do you like nerd stuff? Yeah? Then you'll love this. You never know what might happen. Or who might show up at the lounge. I just want to thank you for for being here. And being my friend. It's always good to have someone you could count on. And I'm glad you're that for me. That's great. I don't. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Cannonball! Give me a bottle of anything and a glazed donut to go. go, go, go. What's up, nerd family? Welcome once again to the Poindexter Lounge. My name is Enosh. These are some of the topics that we're going to be covering today, because today is Friday, and you know what that means. It's Friday, it's the Poindexter Lounge, and it's the drive home with Enosh, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to have some fun today. we got a lot of stuff to discuss, got a lot of things to go over, um, and not much time to do it. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Anthony Grigsby? I see Anthony in there. What's up, Patrick? What's up, Richard Gilbert? TW's in there. I see you guys. What's up, Stefan? Uh, Draga's in there. What's going on, Draga? Shayna's here. Where's my man? I'm right here, baby. I'm right here, girl. You know I'm here. Uh, let's see. Who else is there? Anybody else here? Max Zed is here. What's going on, Max Zed? Uh, Nerd Cosa Nostra is here. Uh, you know what? Hey, uh, Nerd Costa Nostra, would you like a link? Let me know if you'd like a link. And, uh, I'll get somebody in here and then I'll, I'll get you a link. To, 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 to. 
Um, but it's so good to see all of you. Hey, I hope you've had a good week. I've had a good week. Uh, and no matter what happens, you can't steal my joy. My my week has been uh, has been good, and there's been certain people who tried to throw wrenches in here and there and do their little things. But you know what? Mm-mm. We are having a good day. We're having a splendid day, splendid week, and I cannot wait for the weekend. And uh, yeah, I'm spending time with Shayna this weekend. It's gonna be good. It's Palm Sunday this weekend. I got a lot of good stuff going on. A lot of things to be thankful for. And you guys are part of that. All right. That being said. Let's bring in my guest host, my, my co-host for uh, for this wonderful show called The Drive Home. What's up, Austin? What's up? What's up, man? How you doing? I am doing splendid, man. I, I actually made it splendid. on time. I right, good, good. You did. You did. <laughs> I, I was not. <laughs> I, was, I was barely okay. I was rushing in the door. I just made it. You know, I my last order was. I always hate these. They drive me crazy. It's like I'll take an order for a, a grocery shopping thing, and it's like ten items, and then I take it, and it changes to twenty eight. And so <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh God, <laughs> this is." Uh... <laughs> so I I rushed through Sprouts like a bat out of hell and came in. Gosh, you know it's funny, man. Like uh, last week, I used um, like Uber Eats. Right. Uh, to, to get uh, my lunch delivered. And yeah. so I'm waiting and stuff. And everything that came to me, all the messages and everything, and I even got a text message that I thought was from my driver that, <laughs> uh, that <laughs> said, hey, you know, I'm coming in. I'm, I'm like right here and everything. And so then I just texted the guy back and I said, hey, because I had put in the instructions to come in. We're in a big office building and stuff. And we're on the second floor and like right. you got a buzz in and everything. I was like, you know what? Forget this. I'm, I'm on lunch. I'm just, I'll just walk down there, right? So I just texted the guy back and I said, hey, I'm just going to walk out there. I'll meet you out there right at the door. And he's like, I don't speak English. And, I, <laughs> and you're like, uh, wait, what? Huh? Like, what do you mean you don't speak English? Everything has been communicated to me in English. And I'm like, so I text him back. I'm like, you, you don't speak English? He goes, no, I do not speak English. And I was uh, like, but he had well, said me. Well, confusing. <laughs> right. I was, I was like super confused because I'm thinking to myself like, well, did you not send this information then? Like, who sent this information? Like, what the heck, man? And it wasn't like it was like some kind of official thing where like you'd normally expect, you know, like an automated thing. It was literally right. like, hey, you know, it was like said, like, I'm right around the corner. I'm like pulling in right now. And so anyways, it was weird. <laughs> and, then, and then he pulled up. I saw him. He pulls up and I'm like right there. And he's only got one order in his car. It's from Applebee's. It must be mine. But he didn't. He couldn't say anything to me. Like, he wasn't even uh like. Like, are you the guy? Like, I said, hey, I, I think that's my food. And, like, he never said a word to me. He, he picked up the bag and showed it to me and then put it back down for some reason. And, and then I was like, no, that, that's mine. It, right. He's, he's like, this this you? No, no, you? <laughs> yeah, no, like, he, that was the weird part. Like, he was completely silent. He didn't say anything. And so then, like, he, he ended up handing it to me. And, and he, he looked like he may have, you know, um, been you know uh, of an ethnicity maybe that spoke spanish or something like that you know but it was just like it was it was just funny to me like it wasn't it wasn't a big deal you know it was just it was kind of comical that like we got all the way to that point and then it was like i don't speak english it was like hmm, that's interesting hey yeah. hey hey ryan cinematics i know I was just about dcu to mention. fan look at you bam membership wow. membership I will tell you guys this, um, and this really, I mean, this, this is just so you all know, I, so this week, well, I, you know, I'll get into that later, but it's, it's about membership because people have asked me, Austin, like, you know, like, are you ever going to, you know, talk in detail about the stuff that's happened to you this year and yes. everything? And, and, and look, I will just say this, first of all, like part of me wants to go, no, like I'm not going to talk about it, but I know this is that I have sat on on what has happened to me for a year. Yes. Oh yeah. This this week, folks, is the one year anniversary of the end of uh, my former co-host being part of the Point Dexter Lounge. And <laughs> uh, and so the thing is, in fact, today is the one year anniversary of the last positive thing that I probably had to say about that person. Yeah. And so uh, it's it's really interesting. But I have a story to tell, and I will tell that story. 
But the story I'm will not, be told. But I'm not going to tell it in a way that's just for everyone's consumption. Like, right. it's my it's my personal business, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, I I think that we you will, get to we, tell it in your time. How when you we want do it, to. I've already I've already figured out who I want to be on with me. I've yeah. already asked uh, Saggy to uh, be a part of that because Saggy was with me. When, yeah. I mean, she wasn't with me with me physically, but she was on the phone with me uh, that day, and she she you know knows what I was going through, man. And so, um, yeah, so, so that, that'll be coming down, you know, uh, later on, but you know, that will have to do probably with memberships or whatever, because I'm not just going to make that a public video for everyone's consumption to do whatever, you know? So, uh, you know, but anyways, um, that's neither here nor there. Ryan, thank you so much. See, we got, it's been a long time since I've done one of these, so we're going to have to, uh, see what, what should I, what should I give him, man? I got to come up with like, um, Oh, I know what we'll do. Since since we're talking about the penguin today, we'll we'll give you this. Who are you supposed to be? I'm vengeance. <laughs> and also, uh, also another person joined. What's up, Stefan? Stefan. Yeah, I know. So I'm going back here. And or, or uh, he uh, he joined the the nerd um, tier. Me, me, nerd tier. Okay, so I'm trying, trying to pull up. Oops! It won't let me pull it up. What the heck? What the heck? I don't know what it's doing, man. It won't let me pull it up. Hold on a second. Let me try to get it again. I'll hide that one. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to pull up stuff. Up. There it is. There we go. There it is. Yay! Thank you so much, Stefan, for being our newest member. We appreciate both of you guys. And let's see, what should I what should I give uh, Stefan? Uh, oh, here we here we go. I'm gonna give you a, 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 a Nicotina's mom. Nicotina's mom! <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> Nicotina's mom! So there you go, Nicotina's mom. <laughs> Welcome to membership. It has its privileges, for sure. All right. Uh, that being said, we should probably jump right in uh, and, uh, and get to some of these stories. We got we got quite a few interesting ones. Did you did you like the thumbnail today? With the thumbnail, hopefully the, the crazy thumbnails that Enosh makes. I, that was good, man. That was good. And then uh, I got to yeah, help you choose your AI obsession for the day. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, oh, I had yeah. Jack Black in there. You know, like, like I made a little Jack Black AI, and we're talking about AI a little bit, so I made that Joker, and then I made that uh, that robot back there, or whatever. That's apparently what the AI that I use thinks AI. Is. Right. I Dude, the I, other I, one I, you I put, sent me looked looked like he had like a baby's baby Jack one? Black face. Oh God, what is that? <laughs> like a shrunken face? What is that? That's not Jack Black. That's his evil twin. That's Jackie Black. <laughs> that's Johnny Black. That's 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 Johnny Black, Jack Black's brother. Oh my God! I'm said Jackie Black was funny. <laughs> here's here's the funny thing is that I tried to make AI make Joaquin Phoenix's Joker jam oh out God. with Jack Black uh, and the Penguin, and what I and got was. A semi Joaquin Phoenix mix up with Jack Black as the Joker and a penguin. And an actual penguin. <laughs> and an actual penguin. So, <laughs> so. Oh, anyway, God so these are AI. the topics. These are the topics today. You know, speaking of AI, since we're talking about AI, why don't we jump into that topic first? Let's do it. Let's do it, man. You got Let's it. do it. Let's do it. Um, okay, let me pull up the, the article here that I totally sent you. Uh, while you're, okay. doing, while you're doing that, while you're oh, yeah. doing that, I'm going Go to actually send um, a link to uh, uh, Nerd Coast and Nostrum. So, go, so go ahead, and I'll be right back. Okay, go for it. All righty. So uh, as I'm pulling up this link, the Bloomberg link here, but uh, it's looking like a new company, uh, or not new company. It's been around. OpenAI has been around for a while. Oh, also, hello to everybody in the chat. Uh, I might as well just address the chat, too, while you know, I send the link and we wait for everybody so we can all talk about it. Uh, let's see. Ted, that sounds nice. 
that sounds really nice. I would like that. Uh, Larry, what's up, Larry? Um, Droga, is that Mark Wahlberg? <laughs> uh, a fatter version of Mark Wahlberg, I guess. It's it's the uh, the Pastor Stu version. Crazy Joe. What is up, Crazy Joe? I know you've got some, some hot takes still. I know you liked Madam Web. I still hear about about your craziness, Joe. Um, but uh, let's see what else is in who else is in the chat. What if Dan Schneider directed Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice? Um, there would be a lot more feet. That's that is that is all I have to say on the subject. Yep, there probably would. There'd be a lot more kids in the show, and probably <laughs> a lot more feet. Yep. <laughs> that's uh. That's my assumption. Crazy Joe, the only one there, like Crazy Joe, as depicted there in his screenshot. Um, <laughs> Madam I love Web, you. I comes love back Joe. with Madam Web wasn't bad. I know. Said. I love you, Joe. I I love Joe. Like literally, I love Joe. Joe is just Joe is just a great guy. Let's He's just, great. Yeah. He's great. Joe's uh, a great. He guy. has he has some some um, opinions. He does. I love. But you know what, Joe? I gotta say. That, but we love them. This this screen picture though is great. This this uh, avatar is is awesome. You know, you remember Saturday or um, Saturday Night Live? Remember Sesame Street? And uh, <laughs> I can't remember this guy's name, but he was like wacky and crazy and stuff. That is perfect for you, Crazy Joe. I love it. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so now we've got so we got this AI thing, right? And they they yes. wanna they wanna uh, do that. Also, ladies and gentlemen, with us is Nerd Cosa Nostra. What's up, Nerd Cosa? What's Nostra? up, man? What's up, guys? What's up? Nothing much, nothing much. About to uh, let's, uh, let's see. Wait a minute. Do I have to sign up for something to read this darn article? Because I swear to God. Did you? I didn't think you had to. Because I thought I, I create I read your it. account to continue reading. The hell I'm going to create an account to continue reading. Um. Okay. Well, I'll just read the summary of it. Okay. Yeah. Give us uh, a summary. I guess. I guess. Uh, open AI. Open AI. Uh, AI technique, uh, company has scheduled meetings with Hollywood studios and talent agents agencies to encourage filmmakers and studios to use AI in their work. Uh, they've already opened their AI video making software to a few big name actors and directors. Hmm. See, the, the problem with this is, and, and I was actually just talking to a friend of mine today that I work with actually, uh, a guy named Dan and Dan is in film school right now. Like, you know, he's learning the ins and outs of how to film things, how to write, you know, uh, you know, how to write, how to, how to direct, how to, you know, set things up and, and, and lighting and all those things. So he's learning all this stuff right now. And, uh, and we were talking about AI today that it's like, it's, it's one of those things that like you love and hate it at the same time, because like, there's some cool stuff. Like if you're just wanting to make a picture for something, you know, or like a thumbnail or, you know, I mean, whatever I, I, I get it. But like, even then. It is, it's still replacing jobs that people used to do. Cause I mean, let's be honest, yeah. like, but like with me, like I've never hired anybody else to do my thumbnails. I've never hired anybody else to do anything with the channel. I've always done everything myself. So like, right. it's going to say, you know, sometimes it may save me some time. Actually, it may end up costing me more time because then I'm going to play with it and try to get something else to look another way. And then I'm just going to waste more time than I need to, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, uh, I but, think it's. But it looks cool. There, there's things that look really cool and are done really well. But the thing is, I just, I, I have a real problem with this, with Hollywood right now in general, that we were talking about it yesterday, that like everything is so over CGI'd already, like that yeah. they don't go film anything on location anymore, hardly. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's like, it's a big deal when you see a film and you're like, oh, wow, that's a they were there. location. Yeah, exactly. Wow, they were actually at that place. Wow, you mean like I, that's a place that I could actually go and see stuff like in the olden days when you watched a movie and it was actually not in a computer generated background. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just it's gotten crazy out of hand. And now they're pushing now. Now they're actually going after Hollywood. Now they're actually pitching to Hollywood saying, oh, no, you really want to use our AI. We're going to open up our software to you and the actors stuff. And think about that. Like now you won't have to get up so early and go and do that stunt or, you know, be like this or that. You know, like now we can just CGI it. But no, we don't even have to CGI. It's all AI now. So it's super easy. Yeah, it's a damn uh, shame. It's a damn uh, shame because uh 
I mean, look, I think in certain situations, like right now, the big controversy is there's a, <clears throat> a smaller indie movie called Late Night with the Devil, right? Starring uh, David Des- Desmilch. I can't pronounce his last name, but the guy that played Polka Dot Man in the Suicide Squad. Okay. Yep. yep, yep. And um, in the movie, right, this was the movie was filmed, I believe, in 2022, uh, so a couple years ago, before the big AI argument and all of that. Um, you know, but in the movie, there are about like, 10 seconds of these little flashes of posters that were created by, by AI. And okay. then the, the artist from the movie movie uh, did some some work on it and added on to it and did that. So it's not completely AI. But, you know, the, the argument is, okay, so with smaller indie budget films and stuff that may not have the money to hire artists and hire those types of things and do that type of stuff, that might be where the benefit of, of AI, you know, can come in. But, you know, when it comes to big studios using AI and that type of thing, they're really, I mean, I don't see any reason for it. Yeah, it's just, it's just over, it's, it just feels lazy. It feels, it, it like somebody even said in the, in the chat, it, it, half the time it looks horrible. Like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it for a production half the time. It was, it's just like, it, it has a certain look to it. It always seems to have a certain cadence to it. I don't know. I'm just sick of seeing it, man. What do you What do you think, Nerd Kosanosha? Well, I, I think it's just going to be like anything else that's new, right? I mean, uh, like special effects. Look how far they that that's come. And let's just take yeah. let's just take uh, uh, two movies for example. Like, look at Terminator and Terminator Two. Look how far advanced technology took to make that look very real in Terminator Two versus Terminator One. I, I don't think AI right now is in a, at a place to. Um, replace much of a, of a movie it will get there i mean look at i mean what tyler perry canceled his 800 million dollar uh studio expansion in in it was it atlanta georgia because he was like well wait a minute I'm, I'm not gonna invest all this money because look what ai is starting to be able to do and provide right yeah I, that i think that's gonna be where it starts and i think um tell was it tom hanks came out not not too long ago he uh around actors saying well i'm not going to sign over my likeness so if you start using my likeness in movies i'm going to just sue you Mm -hmm, and then soon after that they start some studios try putting it in contracts that okay you're going to do this movie but we will own your likeness and that was their way uh, oh no that was i think maybe it was that during the writer's strike it was Somewhere around no, that you're, time. you're right. Yeah, the studios were trying to inject it into Yeah, the they were trying to inject it into the contracts. and that, Kind of that secretly, was too, where yep. I think it, I, an actor came out and talked about where it was like, I did something for them, and then all of a sudden, I think it was Nicolas Cage for yeah. The Flash. That's who it was. It was okay. Nicolas yeah, Cage for The Flash. Yeah, he said, he because talked he about, said that he had tried to come out and do it, yeah. Yeah, right. that, that he, he tried, that he was there doing it, and that they changed to completely something different than his contract. They basically had his likeness to do whatever they wanted with, and he didn't know that until he saw the movie. Yeah. Now I will say this though about that. I will say this because I've I've seen that interview many times now. I've listened to what he said, and I don't know that I necessarily agree with Nicolas Cage on that because he's all like, "I came in and I did this. I was supposed to be reacting to." Uh, you know, these worlds collapsing and stuff. He's like, so I did that, you know, some introspective stuff, whatever. He's like, but then I show up and I'm fighting a giant spider and all this stuff. Well, okay, obviously they didn't, they weren't going to have him fighting a giant spider if they were going to CGI that, okay? So, I mean, like, to act like you didn't know that there may be some CGI elements of it that you may do something. Besides that, we already have that happening in movies where CGI versions of, of the actor are doing stunts or they're, you know, flying, or whatever. Um, but the performance that Nicolas Cage talked about is absolutely there, because he's looking and observing all the worlds collapsing in the Flash. So that performance is there. It looked like they just added on to it. So I think that there is a fine line, right, between trying to say, like, we can't use anything, you know, like, because it's fake, and then just saying, you know, like, well, let's be careful with how much we use this technology and not overuse it. I, I just don't, I don't think it should, I, in my opinion, I don't think it should start replacing pe- people 
in uh, as far as actors, right? I don't want to yeah. watch a fully computer generated movie um, that's been coded um, end to end. That I think you're gonna, I think you're, you're looking at the death of Hollywood. You start going down that path. But I think that there's some people, though, uh, Cosa Nostra, that that like they would be okay with that. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay I'm sure there are a lot of people, people that'd be okay make, with it. Yeah, because it's cheap. Because <laughs> it's cheap. But that's the thing. Like, I I think that that's what what we as the as the public have to say is like, okay, no, we don't want to see films where it's all just completely this, you know, like. There's yeah, but there's no level of coding that's going to add the the raw emotion that uh, right. that an actor can bring, and right. I, I AI just feels like if it's if it were to be the end result to replace actors actresses, um, you're you're going to lose that human element, and it, it may start feeling like a lot of uh, rinse and repeat. Right? Oh, I think I've kind of already seen this in this other movie because it looks very much the same. Or they, they can't seem to code human interactions or code human emotion correctly. So I'm not going to watch this. I'll go pull out my old VHS, my old DVDs, my old Blu-rays, and I'll watch those. Because they can't take that from me, right? And then, right. And, and I mean, it's bad enough. Uh, movie theaters are still hurting for to get the audience in the seats. I mean, now if you start doing that, you, you might as well start closing theaters down. Right. Right. Yeah. It's I think a, it's a shame. Go ahead. I think yeah, I think besides you know the actors are a big concern, but I think that's going to be a harder get. You know, for uh, if the studios want to do that like to be able to get, you know, actors like this and do that type of because like you said, I think the audience will pretty flat out reject that. Right. Um for the most part. I think the big concern and issue is, you know, probably things like okay, we already have the volume. So now we're probably going to get AI generated images for the background of the volume, you know, that are these, you know, instead of having artists and people actually put together and create from scratch in After Effects, an actual 3D type world, uh, that and writers, you know, the, the real, I think the real worry is, is writers. If I were a writer, I would be very worried because that's, that is the biggest, the studios hate to pay their writers. They hate to have, they, hate, they just don't like writers because at the end, they just want your script. And then at the end of the day, they want to be able to put their own creative touch and all this. And they want to take it from you, you know. So AI being able to write is a studio's literal dream because they don't have to deal with a person that's going to come with them and go, no, that's not my, you know, that that's not what I want. That wasn't my idea, blah, blah, blah. They can just do whatever they want with an AI written script and have, you know, have nobody to argue with. And that's crazy. I mean, you know, like, I've, I've seen a couple of those, you know, AI generators and stuff, and, like, I've, I've punched in stuff, and I sit back and look at it, and I just go, dang, like, <laughs> seriously? You know, I mean, like, it, it's really a dumbing down of everything, because it used to be you did research on something, you, you figured it out, and now you got all these people that are just going and using AI, kids are trying to use AI to write papers, and you know, and in school, and it's just, yeah, man, AI is, and, like, look, I don't want to be that guy who's, like, okay, man, new technology, it sucks, and I'm going to hate on it because it's new technology. That's not it. There are so many things that this could be good for, but we're also seeing there are some things that are very potentially dangerous about AI, and, you know, especially as, it, as like, Costa Nostra said, like, as it gets better, right? Now it may not be like dead on but we see it getting better every day i mean there's something sometimes where you know like it used to be as soon as somebody said you know well this may be ai or you know do you think this is ai you'd look at it and go yeah that's ai right you could tell i've seen some images and some stuff lately that it's like kind of had to really look at it and think about it because of the way it was to be able to tell yeah you know, and yep. that gets scary. I mean, that's, absolutely. I, I, I do believe that those are legitimate concerns, especially in the world that we live in, man, where you can have somebody, you know, have AI look exactly like someone. Yeah, we're talking about actors yeah. and actresses, but, you know, I mean, and I know it's, you know, the conspiracy theorists are out there, you know, like presidents and, you know, 
law enforcement or whatever, you know, and you got people, you've got that kind of technology, it's scary. But beyond the, beyond all that hype, I just, I don't know, man. There's just, there's just part of me, I just, I, I hope that it's not abused, you know. Yeah, it's going to have to be really regulated and really, I, I mean, the big worry is too, or, or not worry, but concern is too, is like, look. You know, I, I, I'm not trying to dig anybody, like, yes, but when you have studios producing really, really bad quality movies like Madam Web and like other things, right? Uh-oh. It's, Crazy and this somewhere is, is getting upset. Well, it's, well, it's not dig, but, but, like, let's be honest, right? When those type of scripts are, are written, it's hard to make the argument of uh, against of, like, well, AI hey, could probably do this better. <laughs> you know? Like, um, probably. So, probably. Yeah, it's also, thing? it's going to have to be, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say the crazy thing about that is Austin is it is if AI wrote that movie, it would probably be closer to the source material. Honestly, it probably would be, and that's the thing is like you know when you when you have that, it's gonna take a lot of regulation on the AI, and it's also gonna take Hollywood to actually start looking at these scripts and caring a little bit more, and not just releasing this garbage because then you know you're not if you have quality scripts being made quality movies being made and all that type of stuff that is obviously better than whatever ai can turn out then you don't have an argument then the studios don't have an argument of oh let's switch to ai but right now they're making a lot of crap let's be honest a lot of crap speaking of a lot of crap uh sequels coming out sequel 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 alert okay so it's not crap first of all I'm a little surprised that we're getting a Happy Gilmore sequel on Netflix. I'm still, but I'm, I'm there for it. I am, I'm all for it. What do you guys think? I am stoked. <laughs> I'll give it a chance, but um, I, it for me, it's it just seems like another sequel, remake, reboot. Is anyone really asking for this? I mean, and, and again. You know, people are going to be like, "Hey, you know, we don't have Bob Barker, we don't have Carl Weathers anymore." I mean, I guess Carl Weathers died in the in the first one, but they still could have done some sort of tie-in. Uh, but again, it just feels they like they showed him in heaven in the first. Exactly, one. exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I just is this really? I mean, who's really asking for? It? I mean, obviously someone's asking for it because they're making it. Um, well, Joe I, is here too. Crazy Joe's here, and like Crazy Joe famously always says. You can't go by who asked for this because nobody asked for Star Wars. Star Wars. I, won't, I won't. I won't. I won't. But I get your uh, point. I get your point. I won't. I won't uh, throw gasoline on, on a Star on a Star Wars uh, 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 conversation right now because I'm sure I'll upset a lot of people um, <laughs> as far as the seven, eight, and nine. But um, I told you. What did I tell you? There he is, right there. <laughs> I told you, I knew that it was coming because Joe has been, Joe has been making, Joe's made videos about this topic. Joe oh, yeah. has, uh, he's very adamant about this. And I get what Joe's saying. I get both sides of this because the, on the one hand, I get that, uh, look, when we say nobody asked for this, what we're really saying is this is not a thing. This is not something that anybody is, clamoring for yeah thank you not, exactly yeah for and most of the time i'm gonna be honest most of the time like i would say it doesn't compare to something like like the original star wars to say like well nobody asked for the original star wars because we didn't even know what it was and that's the point right it's like most of the things that i see people saying nobody asked for this it's like a sequel or it's well, a bastardization of something that we've already gotten and or it's a reboot or it's, you know what I mean? It's just like or a think, uh, spreading of something. And that's why people say, look, nobody asked for this because of that. Uh, that but I think said, a good example, okay. too, also, real quick, a good example of that way I think would be Solo, right? I think as Star Wars fans, necessarily nobody asked for Solo, right? Nope. Because there was a mystery to that character that I think people really, really liked. Like, it was the story of the Kessler run. I don't know what happened, but the story of it was like... I don't necessarily need to see it either. You know, it was the mystery of all that. But sure. if you give it a chance and you see the movie, it's a well-written, well-directed, and well-done movie. And it yeah. actually is is a it's a good Star Wars movie. I, I'll say, it, like, uh, for the most part, I think you know. Yeah. But I sure, fans weren't necessarily asking for it. But at least it was a quality film, right? 
Madam Web. Right. Fans weren't asking for it, and it was shit. <laughs> you know, it was like yeah. so. It, if it was at least a quality movie, you know, where people cared about the script and cared about the acting and the editing and all those types of things, you know, it's a different story. Exactly. Nobody asked for Rogue One, The Mandalorian, Guardians, but they're all quality things. They were all of quality. Right. They all, you know, they, you know, that's, and that's the why thing. I say like I understand what Joe is saying. Right. Right. So, like, I understand both sides of that story because I think that that there are different things being said by that, you know. And so, like, I get what Joe's saying that, like, if we just sat around and waited for us to ask for everything, well, we we get nothing. Exactly. Like, I love I love how Joe too in parentheses just goes. And for the record, I did ask for solo. <laughs> Well, I, I find well, see solo. I, I view slightly different because it's an it's an or it's it, to me it's an origin story uh, right. of the character. Madam Web, um, I th I think they were gonna try to take that down a whole another multiverse angle. But when it comes to movies like uh, Happy Gilmore Part Two, or even if if no one has seen it yet, the Roadhouse reboot. A I lot. Have, I mean, there, I think there's two weekend. sides to the fence on that one. A lot of people are loving it, and a lot of people aren't liking it. I did you already it. watch it? Okay. I watched it. I watched it yesterday, and they, they you you can you can see the slight callbacks to the original, right. but overall, to me, uh, it was. I'm. I think they made it a good choice going to streaming, and I think that uh, it has no rewatch value. The oh, original wow. Roadhouse, I've probably watched that. I don't know how many times, countless times. Yeah. This one, I have, I would have no desire to go back and watch this one again. And I think also all it did was is just open the door for people to believe that, oh, Jake was so good in this, he needs to be Batman now. That you guys are comparing apples and oranges here. That's that's you can't even do that comparison. But that's just an example of where I feel. I I believe like in my opinion, some of these reboots, remakes, and sequels don't necessarily work. I and we can bring up Top Gun Part 2. I think that was a complete anomaly. That one was I think they wanted to do that for a long time, but maybe and I think Tom Cruise held off saying no, I'm not doing it yet until something advances to make it better than the first. Mm -hmm. I mean, are we I mean, what are we really going to see in Happy Gilmore 2? He's in what? He'll have a kid, he's going to teach how to play hockey, then play golf. I mean, like I said, I'll give it a chance. Yeah, yeah. I'll watch it because I, I mean, I'll I, I'll give every movie a chance to change my mind, but I'm not rushing to see Happy Gilmore too. Sure. sure. So. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and then you know, to it, but also to like, given, I mean, it's Adam Sandler. Like, you kind of know what you're getting with Adam. Well, doesn't he have? A, he has, doesn't he have like a, a contract with Netflix? Like yeah. a certain number of film contract so, with them. So, so let's talk about that because not only does he have a contract with Netflix. But he has flown under the radar and is blowing it up on Netflix. The guy has put out so many movies. And they're and all, the like, is, number one hits. Yeah, they're all, like... Murder Mystery and Murder Mystery 2 are two of the top movies on Netflix ever. I mean, talk about flying low under the radar, because I think a lot of people don't... There's a lot of people who don't even know about... They're, they're not even talking about those films. Right. But, yeah. yet, but yet, they've made him a lot of money... Yep. And they're making Netflix money, and they're you know, and so and dude is having a blast working with his friends, doing movies that he wants to right. do. Like, and on top of right. that, it's given him this opportunity to kind of be able to do these cool dramatic roles over the last couple of years, like Uncut Gems and Spaceman, and uh, I forgot the one that he did it was a Hustler, I think, a, the basketball one or something. Hustlers. Mm -hmm. or... Yeah, are are you joking? He has a 500 picture. <laughs> he basically sold his soul to Netflix. <laughs> there you go. S talking about speaking your uh, selling your soul to Netflix. Here is Bradley. <laughs> What's up, Bradley? Hi, baby. Hey guys. Good morning. Uh, but yeah, no. So I mean, yeah, the the dude the dude is is killing it on Netflix. And so you know, like, given the fact that it's a it's a property that I that I really love i love happy gilmore i love that movie and Me so too. so i'm 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 down to you know revisit that world and yeah. and revisit that thing you know and so we'll see we'll see how it is now another world that i'm looking forward to revisiting is uh school of rock part two Ooh. and i'm really and i'm actually really surprised that to this point they've never made a sequel yet because 
Well, because it was movies... before the time that they started making sequels to everything that was good. <laughs> yeah, I know, but but still, yeah, I mean, they still made sequels. I mean, sequels were. I mean, that was a that was a you know mid two thousands movie, late two thousand three. Was it two thousand three? Yeah, see, I, I always, I always I, see for me in my head when it comes to that movie, I always feel like that movie is younger than it is because my boys loved that movie, right? They discovered Landon discovered School of Rock and was like in another stratosphere. I mean, he loved it. And so like, I always forget that, yeah, Landon was born in 2005. So yeah, a couple of years different, but I mean, that I'm really surprised that they have not made a sequel of some kind of school of rock because it's, it's extremely popular. Yeah. Uh, it's beloved. Uh, people just love that movie. It's, it's just a great film. And it's it's endearing. It's it's sweet. It's got Jack Black at height. Jack Black. I mean, like at prime Jack Black and peak Jack know, Black. Peak Jack Black. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, so I, I'm really kind of surprised that they haven't made one sooner. Uh, yeah. But I'm there for I'm I'm there for this one too. I want to know what that story is. Are they going to get some of those kids back to yeah. now as adults? And you know, I mean, you got to you got to imagine Miranda Crosgrove is definitely coming back, and some of the others, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I do agree. I'm happy that he said it too. He's like, but only if Mike White does it. Mike White is a phenomenal writer, and he's been super big. Look, apparently, they tried to get Jack Black on the White Lotus. I don't know if you guys have seen White Lotus on HBO. It's a phenomenal show. Um, but uh, Mike White is the writer and showrunner and stuff. And they tried to get Jack Black on that, but he wasn't available, I guess. So it would be really great if Mike White came back to, to write it, too. A couple of things. Yes, I do believe there is a Broadway show. Uh, yes, there is. There is. Uh, and I don't think that's the point. You do suck. I don't think they're going to de-age the kid. Uh, 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 could you imagine... That'd be hilarious. It's supposed to be like it's supposed to be like the next school year, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's all the same kids just de-aged. Dear God, they'll use AI. Don't use AI. There you go. So that's so that's two sequels though that are that are coming out, and uh, you know uh, nobody probably asked for those either. But you know what? We're we're getting them, and um, at least they're sequel uh, uh, quality movies. Right, I'm down for it. Now, uh, now a sequel that I'm not really excited about, and I could really, honestly, I, I couldn't care less about. Uh, I'm going to go see it because of what it is, but honestly, everything about it is just like, bleh, to me. I loved the first one. I thought the first one was good, and that's Joker. Joker was good. I love the first Joker movie. I don't believe that he's the Joker. I have a lot of fundamental issues with the film as far as being a Joker film. Um, and I have my own theories about that, and I have yet to hear anybody explain to me anything that makes any sense about how Joaquin Phoenix's character is actually the crown, the the clown prince of crime, Joker. He is not the Joker. He's some dude named Arthur Fleck who is probably having some kind of brain issue in himself because he probably knows who the Joker is, and he's probably, you know... <clears throat> putting himself in that position that's the only thing i could think because there there's nothing about that character that screams joker to me which means with this sequel i really don't care because i don't like lady gaga either <laughs> and lady gaga as harley quinn is the worst i i'm sorry i'm seeing all these people like oh she's a great actress she's gonna do great look she she may be able to act but i'm looking for something yes i'm i want somebody to be able to act you know if they're playing a part like that, you know, of a character that I care about. But there is nothing about Lady Gaga that says Harley Quinn at all. I'm sorry. I do not see that at all. I don't want it. Like, talking about stuff that nobody asked for, believe me when I say I did not ask for, one, a sequel to The Joker, because I still don't think that there should even be a sequel to that movie. And two... Get, just miss me with the Lady Gaga stuff. I'm so, but that being said, Austin, you want to tell us uh, what you brought up today about the Joker two coming out? Yes. Uh, so today it was announced uh, that Joker two will feature fifteen. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm oh, not whoa. gatekeeping. No, 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 no. 
I am not gatekeeping. This is not me gatekeeping. I'm just telling you what I like. I'm not telling you what to like. I'm not telling you not to like it. Listen, Shayna's right over here in the house right now. Oh, boo Shayna loves, Shayna <laughs> loves uh, uh, Lady Gaga, right? So this ain't you about me, Shayna. Me. You and me. This is not about me gatekeeping anything. I'm just stating my opinion. Like I'm, I just, I have my opinion. I don't like, I don't like Lady Gaga. I don't. I think she's talented. I think she's talented, but I can't stand watching her. I can't stand listening to her. I don't like it. It's there's something about it that's very grating to me, and I can't explain it to you all the time. I'm just telling you, like I'm gonna go see it. But, and and it could be really good. And if it's really good, I will tell you. I'll be honest with you about that, right? But this is where I'm at right now. I just don't like Lady Gaga, and I and I don't think that that movie needs a part two. Now, I'm sorry. I just wanted to address that because I'm not yeah. a gatekeeper. I, I do not gatekeep anything. I will not tell you what you should or shouldn't like. I will just very much state my personal opinion. Exactly. Um, but, yeah, no, it, it's uh, – so it's going to be covering 15 uh, very well-known songs. So – the news that came out a few weeks ago that it wasn't a musical, it's definitely a musical. Uh, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. That's, uh, that's usually what that means. Um, but uh, I, look, I'll be honest. The musical part of it is the thing I'm interested in most. Uh, you know, A, of course, you're using Gaga's talent there uh, and stuff. I do think Gaga's a great actress. I do think she, she's going to do well with the part. Um, but other than that, I, I'm kind of with you. I don't really think it needed a sequel and stuff. The only thing that I like about it is that, like, I think the musical part of it can play very well between a Joker and Harley dynamic, right? They're completely insane. They're in their own world. They're, you know, all of this, like, so I think if, if, if executed well, like, that's a really creative and cool idea. Um, but... I, I do agree in that, like, it, it this wasn't necessary. Like, I, I think what made the first film so great was that, like, it was a cautionary tale, tale of, you know, how society treats people and this and that and the results of, of who that person can become, ba- you know, like. So unless this has some kind of, like, I think message or some kind of something like that that's on par with, with the first, I think it's it's not going to hit as well if it's just some crazy manic Right. musical thing, you know. That that's a great take, actually. I I really appreciate that, Austin, because that's exactly how I feel. Like I feel like that first one is a. It's the RJ said, well, this is going to be something special now with the second one. No, the first one was something special. The first one was something special and was and was was different. Was was something that was uh, uh, fresh. And it was showing us a side of things. And, like, you didn't really know what was going on. And, like, what? what? You know, what is this? What is that? Um, I, I I, don't see, like, making it a musical seems so much to me like it's a, like it's a, um, they're just trying to do something different. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 that it's not special. That it, that it, like, the musical thing is just an angle. It's just a. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, I can't think of what the word I'm looking for. Well, like I, I do get like like I said, like they're gonna they're gonna use that to Gaga's advantage, right? Because she's the musician, she's the singer, you know. So that's you know gonna be her shtick, <laughs> you know. That's gonna be their their shtick with her playing uh, Harley. Whoa! Did we lose Enosh? Arthur Fleck got him. Uh, uh, uh. Arthur came for him. <clears throat> well, I guess uh, while we wait, we'll go down the line here. Uh, nerd, what do you think of? Uh, I love the first one. I loved it. Yeah, I was, I was just waiting. I I loved I the first it. one. I, I think it. I saw it three times in the theaters. Couldn't wait to buy it when it came out. It's a hard um, watch. I I, it's I, I, I really I, well done. I probably I don't know what this says about me. I probably watch that movie once a week. <laughs> at least at least once a week there's and there's 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 times um i uh i've wa- I'll, I'll i've watched it like i'll i'll be watching it i'll finish it i'll just start it right back over and watch it again 
Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's what everything is it about, about it. it for you? It's, okay, the, yeah, it, yeah. it's everything. It's the it's the the movie. Obviously, the movie itself, but the the atmosphere, the mm-hmm. the 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 music, the score that was done for it. I think fits yeah. perfectly into the scenes of especially when you start seeing his downward spiral get worse yeah. and worse you uh, you tend to feel the music becoming more going down that downward spiral with him um the, the score is is phenomenal the score is amazing i i think it was perfect and that scene of him in the bathroom dancing to, i mean that's and that, that and that and that whole like, scene wasn't even wasn't scripted or anything that was just him right and um and todd they actually said because they were lit they got todd had gotten the the score um, I can't remember her name. The the, the, the lady she's German. Uh, she is. Yeah, I'll look it up here. Go ahead. Um, but but she had sent uh, it over, sent a sample over to him, and they were both listening to it, and then they decided to go film that just the two of them, which I thought was was really interesting. Right. Um, so that was a, I just hearing that Hildur. and then Hildur watching it. Guten Tag, I can. But yeah, it's, it's, yeah, something like that. So. Um, Hearing that and then seeing that scene, it just feel knowing that it's, it's very organic. Right? Yeah. Um, I love the fact that it's a it's a being portrayed as a Gotham we've never seen, an Arkham Asylum we've never seen. Um, I would I would love to have the conversation with Enosh on on his his position of he doesn't believe it's a real Joker or the real Joker. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's obviously for this this stream, but I would love to have that stream conversation. Um, yeah, because I w- I've never heard your your position. Um, I've never oh, heard okay. your position on that. So, yeah. I, while I agree, um, it didn't need a doesn't. I when I saw it, I was like, great, this was a perfect movie. N- doesn't need a sequel. But once that, once it re- reached a billion, and and they only made they only spent fifty to seventy million to do the movie. Then when it made such a big return, I knew it was gonna happen. Yeah. Um I'm 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 I have no um reference with Lady Gaga. Actress, okay. musician, I have I don't I have sure. no reference on her on her work. Um so when I heard about this one coming out and then I heard it was a, potentially a musical then I heard they said it was going to be half and half. Um I'm all for it. Let let let's see what what can happen. Um I love the characters, I love the world. Um, I hope this one does well. I know they've tripled the budget for this one to like two, a little over 200 million. Yeah. I hope it's not wasted. Um, <laughs> but I hope it, it's got to keep the same tone and vibe of the first. If they decide to do Hollywood it up, glitz and glamour, think, think about Batman Returns moving into Batman Forever, right? Right. That very dark Tim Burton. And then he had neon lights and everything. If it does something like that, I think it's just going to really disappoint me, but I'm all I think in. It will I'm all in for the sequel though. I'm definitely going to see it. Uh, that if there's any movie I would choose to see this year, it'd be that one. Wow. Hmm. I think, I think. Just and, to... I, and I can respect that. I, like I said, I really like the first one. I really like the first one. It's just that yeah. like, and I, and I get Shana says here, I have a theory. About the... I think we lost him again. Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay, I thought it was just me because sometimes. No, like, oh, there. Yeah, what the back heck? Now. There we go. You're back now. Okay. You're back now. I think I'm just gonna go inside where the Wi-Fi is on. But anyways, uh, yeah, you know, this is a great theory and everything. I mean, that's a great theory, Shayna, and it's and it's fine. I don't know. I just honestly, I I just don't want to see any more of it. I I mean, I I feel like I got all that I needed to out of out of his version of that character. Uh, and honestly, there is nothing that she can do that will make me feel like she's a Harley Quinn. She will, she will just be Lady Gaga acting like Harley Quinn. Well, so let me ask you this. So when Joaquin was casted for this role, did you feel the same way about Joaquin? Nope. Or did you, or did you see Joaquin? Yes. I can see him in this role. I can see him playing this part. Ever since, ever since Heath Ledger, I have withheld a lot of judgment on actors and actresses being in roles uh, because of that, you know, mm-hmm. uh, because with the Heath Ledger thing, I, yeah, I was, I mean, and that was a long time ago, but I, yep. but, but still yet, I mean, we were, you know, I wasn't in movie talk or anything. It was just me, you know, just talking with my friends and stuff. But when, uh, when I found out that Heath Ledger was going to be Joker, like, yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't think that that was going to work because of who Heath Ledger was and what he had showed us up to that point. 
and uh you know i mean he had been in kind of these all these teen you know comedy yeah. group you know stuff and and so but that was a breakthrough movie for him and it's a shame that his life ended before he was able to go on and do a lot more and show yeah. us like who he really was uh when it comes to lady gaga i just don't like her I don't like anything about her. Yeah. I don't like her style. Like, you know, somebody said, and, and I'm trying not to be too mean about this, but honestly, like, I'm just telling you, I don't like her. She, there is like, I, I get it. Like somebody said, like, I, Oh, crispy said that like her stick is to be weird and everything. That's not Harley Quinn's stick. Harley Quinn's not just about being weird. Harley Quinn, like is very intelligent. And I know like, every, you know, I know she's a businesswoman. I know she's intelligent. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, as far as that argument that, like, it's like Harley Quinn. No, Harley Quinn is very systematic in what she does. Harley Quinn, yeah, she acts crazy. But you can even see, like, in Suicide Squad. I love the moments where where Margot Robbie turns it on and turns it off. She goes from, from being depressed and crying because of everything that's going on to, like, you know, she tries to put on a happy face, you know, and do the thing. So, you know, I just don't personally see her in any way as that character like i don't want to see it like i don't like she could be the greatest one ever and i still just wouldn't like it for some reason like because i just don't care for her like even when i watch those migraine commercials i think to myself please stop doing those migraine commercials because you're giving me a migraine <laughs> man <laughs> tell us how you feel buddy I tell know. us how you feel <laughs> I'm just sorry. I just, yeah, I just, I've just never cared for her. Um, she's got, some, she's got a couple of songs that I like, but you know, like, yeah, there's just been, there's just been some stuff that I just, I, I just don't care for her, you know? And so I'm not trying to be mean about it. I'm not trying to be rude about it. I know I may come across a little mean, whatever, but like, you know what I mean? And I know a lot of these things sometimes, you know, like it's just a shtick, like the whole Josh Gad thing. I don't even really give a crap about Josh Gad, but it's funny. And so, like, I'll play that bit all day long. I just really don't like Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. And so, yeah. so when I found out that she was going to be in this movie, like, the excitement that, the little bit of excitement that I had to see, like, where they would take the character next, when they started the whole, she's going to be Harley Quinn and we're going to make it a musical, that's where Enosh went, mm, see, this now seems like a gimmick. This now seems like a gimmick movie that you're just trying to cash in because you know that you made so much money with the last one that if you make anything on this one, you're just golden still. I don't see a future for... for I, I don't see anything after this. I think this will be it. Regardless of what it makes, I don't see them doing a part three after this. Um, looks like you got a super chat, though. I, 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 think, I, think, I think that's good. good. Uh, first of all, we had uh, Crazy Joey with a $3 super chat. Thank you, sir. Says, uh, uh, what's your thoughts... On the 1983 comedy Joysticks. Never seen it. I have never seen that, Joe. Are you trying to give me uh, homework to do on a weekend? <laughs> I've never even heard of that movie, Joe. I've, I've, I'm kind of surprised right now because I've never, like, especially a 1983 movie, I would think that I would be on that, like. Hmm. Well, I will have to find out, Joe. So I apologize that I don't know what that movie is, but uh, I will find out. And when I do watch it, I will definitely give you my opinion. How's that sound? It's a video. It's it, it's like a it's a I don't want to say it's a video game movie, but it, it's about like a video arcade it's a story, okay. like mm -hmm. a joystick. Uh, That's yeah. But, but I, I, yeah, but it, it's a good '80s movie. Cool. Cool. Uh, Stefan here with a 20 with 25 Ron. Ooh, thank you. Mm, thank you very much. Uh, says Joker uh, Joker movies intentionally ambiguous, uh, whether a Joker origin story or crazy Arthur Fleck, both are valid. Hope the sequel uh, keeps this ambiguous vibe. So, yeah, I kind of do, too, uh, uh, Stefan. Uh, so without going into too much of my uh my theories on the, on the movies and stuff like that the, the problem is is that when this movie was coming out i did a we, we did a trailer reaction for the first movie okay and all i said in the trailer reaction was i said i wonder what this movie is because 
I could see that it was taking a lot of liberties. It was going to be its own thing. And that was what I kept saying in, in our trailer reaction. I said, you know, I wonder what this is going to turn out to be like, you know what I mean? Like what, what really this, the story. And I had all these people try to tell me that it was from, um, uh, whatchamacallit, um, what's the, what's the, the comic, um, was it one bad day or something or joke? Um, yeah, that, I mean, well, yeah, that's what he says at the, you know, like <clears throat> the, it shows him as the, as the comedian and, and right. failed comedian and all that stuff. And so people, I literally had people coming onto that video. It's the only video that I've ever made that I shut down. Wow. <laughs> because of stupidity. Because here's the thing. I left it up for the longest time and I kept getting comment after comment after comment on that thing. People telling me that I was stupid and I didn't know what I was talking about, that I didn't know anything about DC, that I didn't know anything about the Joker, that I didn't know anything about Batman. Because in that comic series, what, what, uh, why can't I think of what it's called now? The Killing Joke. The Killing, killing joke. joke. Thank you. That in thank the you, Killing Chad. Joke, Arthur <laughs> Fleck turns into the Joker. And I said, bullcrap. Arthur Fleck is not a person. Arthur Fleck was not in the comic, but I got told that I didn't know what I was talking about. And then the video got hit with a copyright um, thing where, you know, like they were just going to take the revenue, but we had 35,000 views on the thing or something. At that point. And I went, forget this. Look, I'll take abuse, man. Like if, if, if YouTube wants to pay me for it, sure. <laughs> but like, I wasn't going to deal with a bunch of stupidity for the rest of that video's like incarnation. Like, because people are dumb and don't know anything about DC and they think that the Joker was named Arthur Fleck and that this was that movie. Shut right. up. Because that's not what it was. And so I took the video down. I said, no. I said, no, I'm not paying somebody else for me to deal with all these stupid comments from people who don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so then I went to go see the movie and I, and before I saw the movie, I went to go, I, I watched, um, King of comedy. Mm -hmm. And I loved seeing the, the connections between those two movies. I like, I'm telling you, I really liked the first one. The problem that I have with it is there's nothing about that movie. That's, that's real every time. And, and this, this will just give you a little sneak peek. Cosa Nostra. Every time something good happens to Arthur Fleck in that movie, it's a figment of his imagination. C correct. Correct. And, and it's like, it's so not, that so tells me. So why real quick, the, why do people act like the ending of that movie is real? So, so my wife, my, my wife believes how the movie ended. Uh, so there's two scenes. One, when he's talking to, I think it's about, er, about a quarter of the way in, he's, he's talking to um, his, it's not a psychiatrist, the person he gets, the state, the state worker he gets his, his meds from. Maybe, yeah. it's just, maybe, maybe she's a psychiatrist. I don't know. And when he says, I, I, I feel I was better off in, in, in the hospital. And then we get that quick scene where he's banging his head against the door. And then it flashes right back into what we believe or perceive to be the present time where he's out and sitting at a desk talking to her. And then the movie ends with him in that hospital um, talking to another person. So my, my wife believes the whole time he's been sitting there the whole time. And he's, and what we're seeing in the movie is just, his his imagination of what story he's telling her and we're just we're just seeing that projection as the film that's what my, my wife believes that to be the, the case um that's very similar to what i think actually yeah. it's now, very see, that would be that would be great and i would i think that if it wasn't having a sequel but now we know <laughs> well sequel. but but keep in mind in, in the way the the way the first one ended though when he's walking out and he has the bloody footprints um going down the hall and then he's being chased by one of the guards it's very possible that we might we lady gaga might not be harley quinn right away she might be Har harleen as yeah. a psychiatrist oh, yeah. first and then oh, yeah. starts to change with him or gets him out and then he starts to truly live what he what we perceive to be the real life in part one but now he's really now going to live that right it's just a guess but yeah. I, I think, but that's how my wife perceives it is. It was what we saw was all just his projection of a story based on those two scenes. Yeah. Well, see, and that's, that's very much mine too, because every, every scene that something positive happens to Arthur, 
or it's something that like he perceives as being positive or good for him or whatever, it's always a figment of his imagination. Yeah. Uh, and so at the end, like, like I, I was, I was amazed to see how many people were like, yeah, well, like you're being stupid, man. At the end, like the whole city's like holding him up and like, he's the Joker and stuff. It's like, I don't believe that happened. Yeah. Like, I don't believe that the dude who just shot somebody on TV, that the whole town is like, yeah, this guy's awesome. Let's lift him up. And like, and right. the whole thing, like up openly and publicly, like, you know, I mean, like it just, it doesn't feel real to me. And then, uh, you know, we get that, we and we get that one reveal scene where it literally shows all these things in the movie that we thought were real. Well, that weren't, right. yeah. Weren't. And, and so I just looked at it that way, that it was just like, I feel like this is about a guy more. I mean, plus when you look at the age difference between the Joker then and any potential Batman, uh, it's, I don't know, man. It's just like, so, so you got a 40 something year old Joker and like a 10 year old Bruce Wayne, you know, like by the time Bruce Wayne grows up and I'm not saying that he has to be Batman. This can be an Elseworlds thing. I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, that kind of leads into like a Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson, like Keaton in his thirties, Joker in his late sixties, seven. I mean, well, but no, cause that, cause that Joker, he's in his early twenties. He's only Jack, Jack Nicholson's Joker in 1989. In the flashback where he kills um, oh, okay. Right? Yes. Yes. He's yes. he because he even talks about that he was just a kid, that he was. Just, yeah, I think Austin was for, referring to the actual character Nicholson was playing was not twenty. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That's what. <laughs> but, but the character. But the character when they said the character killed the way. Yeah. During the flashback scene. During the right. flashback scene. Yeah. He's very much a young kid. Right. And, and so, like, you you would only put him maybe you know ten or so years you know, plus from Bruce Wayne, which is fine. But like, you got a, you got a guy who's 30 years older than a Bruce Wayne. I mean, so, I mean, like, I don't know, man, you got Bruce Wayne at, you know, at like 30 and you got a guy who's like 60 years old running around. I don't know. It's just weird. Well, that, to- that idea, I don't, I'm not necessarily completely against because I think there's, there are some things, you know, you can do there with, with that. I did want to say, I know we have Bradley's been kind of quiet the whole time, but if Bradley had any, uh, any, uh, any yeah. opinions on all of this, well, you guys have known me for a long time now, <clears throat> so I'm sure some people did. Bradley fall asleep. Can you, hear me? can you hear me? Can you hear him? Yeah, I can hear him. Me and Nerd, can you hear me, Nosh? No, I can't hear him. Oh, me and Nerd can hear. Oh, you can well, hear me. Oh, now I can hear you. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay, there we go. Maybe because I moved it closer to my mouth, it's probably probably why. Um, no, you guys have known me for a long time now, and some of you may know that I have no interest in this film. Two years ago, when they announced it, and I still have no interest in this film, um, let alone the first one at all. I just think it's a, a ripoff of key of comedy and a bunch of other films and doesn't really stand on its own in any really uh, substantial way, except for the music. Um, but no, like the musical aspect of the second one, like I want to see how they portray that. It really isn't my main interest. My main interest is like, what, what are they going to do? with the story because the first one the most important part of the first one is that it did have a message at it at the end of it and had a message throughout the film in general um and like Enoch said earlier i don't feel like this is a genuine story that they that they genuinely wanted to make i just feel like it's a gimmick that warner brothers was like hey we made x amount of money here here's some more money make another film Here's, here's double the budget that you don't need for a, a two character drama film. You don't need that much money for that sort of thing. And how much? I, don't know. This? I think it's the, like the second one's two hundred. The second one's two hundred million. What? Two hundred. The first one was two hundred. Yeah, the first one was between fifty and seventy. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, which I think is ridiculous. Like I, I, I just don't. Yeah, I, I mean, didn't think the budget was that high for this movie. What yeah. the heck? Yeah. Well, and that that kind of tells me. Which I know, nerd Toaster Nostra said your your big worry, right? Is the the change of change of tone and theme. Yep. That in itself kind of tells me there's going to be a I think a big fantasy element to this, and that kind of even with Sheer, <coughs> Sheeran's theory, right? A lot of this is going to be it probably in their head, big production, glamorous, all this type of stuff, because in their head they're the heroes of their own story, right? 
even though they're killing people and doing all these atrocities and terrible things, um, I think there's going to be that kind of this is like epic fantasy element to the to the musical, almost almost like a you know callback to the older uh, musicals where they just break out in song, you know, for <laughs> and, and all that type of stuff. Like, well, I guess, well, I could, RJ brings up a good point as well. With uh, you know? but yeah. Uh, RJ it. brings up a good point as well in the, in the comments about their contracts being more expensive <coughs> with the second film, which is a good, a good possibility as well. True. Do you think? I mean, get, you guys think that we maybe get a redo? I was thinking about this, like when you said that, Austin. Like I'm sitting here thinking of like what is that? What is that movie that like has that big production scene that's like all the women like doing synchronized swimming and stuff like that, and they're like hail Caesar. Jump- yeah, like they're jumping in the water and out of yeah. the water. Like the whole platform rises out of the water, but they filmed it in reverse. So like they come out of the water dry with sparklers and the whole nine yards. Oh, and- oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like I, I feel like, yeah. I, I and think- it's going to be kind of goofy, but manic and, and all these other types of things. Like I can see yeah. them very much going for that. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I could see that. Which I'm like, as an homage to like the classic musicals and stuff, like I'm interested in seeing that, but I don't want to see that in a Joker movie. Right. I don't want to see that in Joker 2. Like, that, like it's, it just seems like such a tonal change and such a tonal <laughs> shift from the first one. And I'm just like, it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's sympatico for me. I it feel bad. Like, I don't know. You, Bradley. You know, like I feel bad that I feel that way about a Joker movie, but it was yeah. like that first Joker movie. It, 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 it kind of, I was okay with it in the end, but I really didn't feel it needed to go anywhere else. Like it was an Elseworlds movie for me that it was just like, Hey, what is the Joker maybe started this way? And it was just this thing. Okay, great. I really don't care about that world. Yeah, I don't Not really either. And I'm sorry. For, and, and look, and, and, and if you all do, I mean, obviously uh nerd coast and Nostra, you you really enjoyed the film and like that's yeah. something to really look forward to. So like I, I respect that. Well and, and 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 yeah, I re- I mean I was re- hey, you like what you like? Um yeah, I, absolutely. I was and I, I hey, that no skin off my back, right? No, I um, I just I mean cuz I cuz I am going in pretty hard on the movie. Oh no, you're like, you're I, hey, you, everyone's like, going to have And I know how I feel. I know how I feel if like yeah. I'm, I'm the guy in the room who likes something and like everybody else is crap. <laughs> like I don't, I don't want to be that way with no, you. No, let me tell you something. When 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 we're, when we're done here, more likely I'm going to go watch it. Yeah. This one. <laughs> so it doesn't it, hey we're not all gonna like the same right. movies right? right we're gonna like a lot of movies and we're not gonna like a lot of other movies but hey we're, no one's being disrespectful no yeah. one's you know coming hey and that's what to me that's what matters and it's hey, nice long, to have we're, we're all being respectful we're all having then. a great conversation about why we do exactly. or don't like it why the first one and why we do or don't yeah. believe don't support or plan on seeing the second one for whatever reason and i'm, I'm okay with that because i'm sure there's a lot of movies of three of you and many people in the chat like that i'm like i would never see that right like <laughs> happy gilmore too <laughs> i'm not interested in that but i mean like you guys have mentioned uh, i think except for bradley you'll probably give joker two a chance and great and if oh, you he'll find, go see it he will go go see it. And if, yeah. yeah if you go and if you guys find like hey yeah this was really bad i may come out with the same reaction i may go see it and be like man this was really not worth 200 million dollars or was not worth the two hours and five minutes of my time right i can't believe they made this movie um but that but that definitely won't change my opinion about the first one the first one yeah. I, I mean i'm set there's no one's going to convince me otherwise um that being a, a, a bad movie um yeah. now uh, now as far as um one, one more theory i want to put out there is is i hope they do explain in the second one if what we saw in the first one at all was real or again, yes. if it was just projection i hope yeah. they now they kind of need to <laughs> yeah i hope they explain that and say yes he really did do all those things they he really did kill uh, uh, Robert De Niro, and they really the the crowd got around them around the car and lifted them up. I want to know if that really happened or not. Uh, I'd be think it'd be a great way to start off on um, the first quarter of the movie to explain if he was just imagining all that and we right. saw that projection, or if it really happened and where the second movie goes from goes from there. But but, but as far as Lady Gaga goes, like I said, I have no point of reference with her work, music, movies, whatever she's done. So I'm I'm really going into it blind about her. Um, yeah. So. Well, I think she's she's a good uh, she's she's a great choice. She's a phenomenal actress. She's. I've been following 
her career since I was a kid when she first came out. I've always loved uh, her her work and her music, and seeing her come into acting has been really really cool and interesting. Yeah. I know she's been wanting to, you know, that she's been she wanted to do that from the from the very beginning, you know. Yeah. He was and, told, and stop you know, it! You're so stupid. And the the fact that this has a musical wow. aspect to it, I'm I'm definitely okay with that too, as long as they can do it right. Uh, yeah. I mean, there haven't been too many m movies, musicals that I've been into. I know one that I, I really enjoy and really like that many people don't. And that was Sweeney Todd with Johnny Depp. Oh, I know a lot of people oh, did nerd. not like You <laughs> and I are going to be best friends because that's one of my favorite musicals of all time. I freaking love it. A lot of people didn't like that movie, but I I loved that movie. It was and brilliant. Fact, and I didn't know when I first was going into seeing it. I didn't even know it was a musical. Really? And I had no idea. I mean, I knew I knew that there there were, it was a play and there had been like m musicals done on it, but I didn't know the movie mm -hmm. was going to be a musical. So like five minutes, I'm like, "What is this?" And I'm like, "Oh, I think this is." Right, a musical. He's saying it about London and, and yeah, and then it, the it, it, like, and to me it, it it hooked me and I yeah. and I and I loved it. But um, we'll I, it, we'll see how it plays out. I mean, we have a what another five six months before it comes out, so. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get a trailer soon. Yeah, yeah, I think a trailer. I think the tra whether it's a teaser trailer or a full trailer, I think that will say a lot of how this right. is going to play out. Yeah. So, right. Yes. Yeah. Stefan here with a, with another ten, Ron. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. It says uh, hope next DC films are as dark as the Batman slash Joker. I see. Uh, I think the main universe is going to be. I I think the main universe is going to be serious up to a point. Yeah. But but then I, I really believe that it's going to to be more like a comic book world and where we'll probably see more of this serious stuff like the Batman or Joker will probably be these else worlds off. Yeah. In yeah. The main world. It's unfortunate. Um, but for some people, you know, honestly, they just they, they can't take their stuff seriously unless unless you say it's an else world thing because god forbid it's not the classic you know, 1950s version of that character that they love so much mm -hmm. you know, that they weren't even alive for but you know that's all super <laughs> and can ever be you know anymore. um crazy joe here with a five dollar super chat thank you sir says is anyone on the panel going out to see you can call me bill this weekend it's the man's 93rd birthday today happy birthday william shatner um man, 93 wow not the biggest william shatner fan so i'll probably be skipping that one well last year see it. william shatner or no it was the year before wasn't it yeah, yeah it was the year before we meet william shatner and i'll tell you what uh he was pretty cool uh yeah I, I don't have any plans on seeing that movie right now because actually I want to, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I got to get in here to see Shana here in a minute, but I, uh, but I am, I, I'm thinking about maybe going to see Ghostbusters. Plus uh, you all know that uh, Shana and I were in that uh, production uh, last year of, where I, where I played a cat, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that, that was a musical that I was in. So I like musicals. <laughs> don't, don't act like I don't like musicals because I do. <laughs> Um, but our, the, our friends who put on that production, uh, dark room productions, and you know what? I should have Jim on sometime. That would be a great interview actually is to interview Jim. Uh, but Jim at dark room productions, they are putting on, uh, uh, some, uh, a parody of two twilight zone episodes complete with commercials and everything, a uh, lot of commercials and stuff. So that weekend too, this, this that's the, we're not in that production. Uh, we decided to sit this one. Out. So, uh, but later on this summer, we're going to be in a production of star Trek. Oh wow! The original series, yeah, it's it's pulling from an episode. It's a parody of uh, the hippie episode of uh, Star Trek. So, right. uh, and, and I'll tell you what: the fact that that the fact that William Shatner is ninety three years old and looks as good as he does speaks about. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't plan on seeing this, but I, I, I'm in 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 a tap to. Will, I'll be watching Star Trek Five. Don't understand the hate it gets. I love Star Trek Five, Final Frontier. Um, so many people say it's the absolute worst Star Trek ever made. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. It's like Godfather Three. I love Godfather Three. Don't understand the hate that gets either. But um, that'll be my my. I'll tip my hat to watching Star Trek Five and then for his birthday. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, yeah. So uh, finally today, and this. Oh, hold on a second. 
Oh, we got another uh, another ten, Ron. Here, thoughts on Hades Hades Town? Oh, uh, you guys probably wouldn't um, know too much about this, but uh, this is it's a it's a Broadway musical. It's a musical. Um, it's really popular on Broadway. I've heard of it and would like to see it and heard a lot of good things. It's got uh, music by Justin Vernon and Bon Iver and a couple other artists. And... But yeah, that's all I know about it. <laughs> I have not heard about it, but I will definitely be looking into it now. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, one of the, it's one of the things that I love about doing these kind of types of shows is people come in times with, with like suggestions and ideas for stuff that like, you know, like I've never even heard of. And that's cool. Joe says here, uh, I love Star Trek Five. I love Star Trek Five as well, uh, Cosa Nostra. I, I, I've always loved Star Trek. It was Star Trek Five. That, remember the other day when we were talking about like that my that my grandma gave me a hard time over a Star Trek movie. It was Star Trek Five and Doctor McCoy. Well, Star Trek Five and Star Trek Six were the first two Star Trek movies I ever saw. I didn't know there were. I, I didn't know they were parts five and six. I just thought that was the two Star Trek movies when I was a kid. It wasn't until later on I found out there were four previous movies that were actually one two three four um yep. but yeah i think star trek five is great heck yeah um but uh yeah so uh finally today i i gosh man I, well first of all i was gonna do this and then you know what? i'm gonna commit to it because i wanted to do this and i haven't seen this drop in a long time speaking of musicals what if the joker just started off like this i've been thinking about blowing up my toaster but then I would I make my bread hot and hard at the same time. He's got a problem. He's got a problem. He needs to make his toast hot and hard at the same time. Um, so the last thing here in our, uh, I think it's the last thing, is, uh, so Mackie came out. And said that uh, Sebastian Stan and uh, who's the other guy? Um, the, anyways, that they're not in Captain America 4. What do you guys think about Sebastian Stan? Like, I, I, the, the guy who played Baron uh, Zemo, I don't, I don't really care about that. I, 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 you know, he doesn't have to be in Captain America 4. But Bucky is a pretty important part of that story. Yeah. And I really don't, when, when, when Austin said that to me today and I saw it for the first time and I was looking at it, I was like, I, I know that there's already been writing problems, right. And they had to rewrite some stuff and like, they had all these issues with, you know, testing it out and stuff like that. So I know all that, that really concerns me actually. I like, I didn't think it would concern me that much that like Bucky's just not in it, but it does. Does it concern anybody else? Is he not in it at all? Like period, yeah, he's not in it. Oh, yeah, he's wow. not a part um, of the script, I guess. Yeah, apparently he's not in it at all. Wow. Um, sounds I, like uh, M- Mackie's gonna have to really carry this movie then. Yeah, and see, Mwamba, here's here's the thing. Like, I like Sam Wilson. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know that he can carry that movie. Yeah, I think Harrison Ford will be carrying that uh, that film. <laughs> yep. You know, it, his it, back is he, he's pretty old, so his back might go out from carrying that film. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, and I, it's just weird, you know, obviously coming from Falcon and the Winter Soldier, you know, the follow-up being Captain America is supposed to be the sequel to that and no Winter Soldier. <laughs> when was Captain America supposed when was this one supposed to come out? It was supposed 20, to come out I think this year. 25. I believe. Could, is it because been pushed several times? Okay, so is it because Sebastian is committed more to Thunderbolts? No, 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 no. Well, it's okay. It has to do with so they've already shot last year. They shot a lot of the movie. Okay, they're getting rid mm-hmm. of all of that and they're re- oh, so they're like it. doing they're like rewriting the they're doing a rewrite yeah. is what you're saying. Oh, okay, yeah, wow. yeah, um, and so they're shooting a lot more. Uh, you know, this year and th- that's the one that's going to have uh, Tim Blake Nelson coming back. Uh, as his character from the Incredible Hulk. Okay. okay. Um, you know, he's going to be, I think, the main villain. Wow. But yeah, but yeah uh... even even then, Stan, sh- this should kind of be, you know, the, the interim, right? Setting up Stan for Thunderbolts. 
Unless he makes a cameo, something at the end to come in at the last minute and help and help Sam Wilson, you know, beat whatever, you know, do whatever he needs to do. Um, th- I mean, this this might just turn out just to be another one of those MCU movies where it's like, come on, you guys still can't get it together, and now you're you're ruining now another film. Yeah, or, game because the yeah. Captain America movies have been the most together of all the films. Yeah, and and they've been the most impressive. As far as I, as far as I have felt, like they, they, they're the ones that feel more like a film, yeah, a comic book movie. Yeah, like Winter Soldier was is easily one of my top three MCU films. Easy. I love Winter Soldier. I love, uh, I, I love the the first Avenger, um, and you know I like Civil War. There's parts of Civil War that I just don't like because of all the superhero stuff. I didn't like everything that they did with that i felt like some of that was over the top but and silly you know like when they weren't really fighting you know and everything but it looked nice you know it looked cool and it set up what came next obviously with the event you know and stuff but i just you know and spider-man and everything and that, and that intro for spider-man is is fire you know so but yeah to do a captain america 4 and i just i don't know it feels like it feels like they're leaving people outside yeah well, they're going to find out if it's going to come to bite them. Yep. Especially uh, that second weekend drop. Right, right. Um, well, and that's the thing. It's like, I, I get it. You know, it's a big transition anyways, right? It's a, it's a huge transition to go from Steve Rogers to basically Falcon in a Captain America. Well, not just Steve Rogers. I mean, you they they came out with their, with their well-known most identifiable characters hulk iron man captain america thor they 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 not wore those stories out they they finished those stories while trying to introduce characters that your general audience doesn't know your general audience doesn't know bucky doesn't know sam doesn't know you know wanda and vision they don't your general audience doesn't know these characters and when you start to now have to rely on them to carry your universe forward people are gonna be like well I'm not, i don't know who that is so i'm not really interested and because these people aren't also into probably comic books graphic novels so they're not going to know this stuff and that now they've lost interest and now you're trying to bring them back they don't want to come back because they liked steve rogers or tony stark and bringing in a mul- and bringing in a an alternate multiverse tony stark or steve rogers isn't i don't think that's going to do it um that's just my opinion yeah, I, I, I got to say here, I, I, I'm going to push back on you a little bit, Jay Money, on this one. Um, I yeah, it's fine. You don't have a problem. with it. It's not that I have a huge problem. with it. It's just a concern at this point. But and I get it that Bucky is more integral to Steve's cap. I get that. But they've also I mean, we just had, you know, uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Right. So they connected these two uh, in, in that show. And we all know by watching the Captain America story that even though Sam Wilson is now Captain America, Bucky is still involved in that story. Bucky is very much involved in that story because honestly, even with the way that the MCU passed the torch, I didn't feel like it felt like we were supposed to really take it seriously. Like it was kind of like almost like a temporary thing is how it felt like that. We're going to see how this works. And if it does, great. So now they've given him his own movie. But where I will push back on you a little bit is on uh, Anthony Mackie. I think he's a fine actor. I don't have a problem with his acting. But what other movies has Anthony Mackie carried? You you said that that he's a star who's carried movies before the MCU. What movies is Anthony Mackie carrying on his back? So no. I don't think I've ever seen him carry a movie. I definitely see him being a part of a supporting cast. Yeah. Um, like I thought one movie that I thought uh, he was good in, which was with uh, Casey Affleck, was with Triple uh, Nine um, from 2016. I, I It was like one of those heist type movies. Uh, right. He wasn't the main actor. He, he kind of was a, him and Casey Affleck and a couple other people were kind of the main people. But I mean, that was a good movie. But again, to your point, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen him actually carry a movie solely on his own 
Yeah, I I think he's a fine actor. I don't have a problem with him as as an actor. I think he's a good actor. Yeah, um, he's been in a lot of good. He's been in a lot of good stuff. Yeah, he's been in a lot of great stuff. I mean, I loved his episode of uh, Black Mirror. Like that was that was a good episode too. I mean, because he is a good actor. So that that's not my point. I'm not saying that he's not a, a good actor. I I'm just saying that um, it's just weird to me because I I don't see him. Uh, carrying a film by himself i don't see him as a strong leading man and and i'm i I just i guess i'm kind of questioning that to say that because because jay money's got some great opinions and so i'm not saying that's not a great opinion i'm just saying i i don't know i don't know what movies you're talking about because i don't remember him now he's done some smaller stuff like i remember when he he was in a movie um it was called the banker it was it was during the pandemic time so i don't think it got probably a lot of attention it was based in like the mid 1950s okay. um where he was uh it was, you know your typical 50s type movie in that time period where he was buying up uh he was one of those people trying to get a loan buying up properties and it was dealing with like a lot of racial issues in the in the film it wasn't I think it was very it was a very low budget film type like an independent movie i mean but he's again he's done some great stuff um but i think he uh, at an independent level yeah he's he's definitely kind of been the focus uh, the focal point of those movies, but nothing like a big blockbuster that he's, he's carried for a major IP like yeah. Captain America that he's had to carry on his own. Yeah. So, so, so this will be his first, this will be his, his opportunity depending yeah. on who else is in this film, you know, at the end of the day, but obviously they're not going to have Zemo and they're not going to have Bucky. So, you know, we, we shall see what, uh, what they do with that film and where that film goes. And if that's going to be a huge, huge moment for the MCU, yeah. because they are either going to realize finally uh, a part of that story that they've wanted to tell and we're hoping would be successful. So if it's successful and, and everybody, I mean, everybody's pretty much accepted Sam Wilson as the new captain America, but it's not the same. You know what I mean? He's again, it's, it's still glorified Falcon in a Captain America outfit. I mean, it, it's just what it looks like to me. It, there, he, you know, he's not. So I'm just saying like with, with audiences going to see this, the question is going to be not on a TV show, right? Not on a Disney plus show that they can watch at their own home, but are they, is the general public bought in enough with him as Captain America now that they go blow up that movie. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting to see because if that movie doesn't resonate with people, if it doesn't resonate with people, then you got a problem because then you got your Captain America situation. That's not the way that you want it. Right. So, you know, I, I don't know if there's a backup plan at that point. I mean, there's a lot of people who there's a lot of people who are still upset because Bucky's not Captain America. You know, um, so uh, what's Jay Money say? He says, I respectfully disagree. That's fine, man. On that, Enosh, uh, yes, Bucky and Sam have connected and they are friends, but Sam can definitely be by himself as this is his journey as Cap. Uh, she Hate Me is a movie he led. Okay, but yeah, but man, okay, but this is what I'm saying. I, I get that, and I'm saying give him a chance. That's fine. Uh, you know, and I know that this is his journey as Captain America. I get it. And if that's the story they're telling, that that's fine with me. But Bucky is still very much attached to the, I mean, the, the last movie, the last Captain America movie was literally, or well, not the last one, but one of the Captain America movies is literally called Winter Soldier, right? Like, so, like, yes, that's Steve Rogers, and I get that. But where I will disagree with you on, you're like, okay, so She Hate Me is a movie he led. But nobody. She, yeah. She Hate Me not, is not Captain America. Yeah, it was from the early 2000s and it took a big, it took a big loss. I think it cost like almost 10 million, only made like a back a million. And then, yeah, they, someone said in the chat it was a Spike Lee movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, and that's my point. That, that was, that's not a major IP. He's he's, he's he's huge. Yeah, he's, he's huge always IP. been a supporting person. That his his biggest role to date 
is and don't get me wrong, Falcon. I want it to be successful. I hope he blows it out of the me water. Too. I hope it's a great thing, and and it and it can lead to it can get maybe course correct some of the MCU stuff. I hope that happens because a lot of, to me a lot of the MCU stuff lately just hasn't been hasn't been hitting it. Um, and maybe this is where they turn it around. I'm yeah. with you. So I want to make that very clear. And Jay Money, please, please hear me out on that. Is that I'm not saying that this is what I want. I'm saying that with all the evidence that we have there, like I don't, we don't see that that he has this body of work that says that he can carry this character and the MCU in the MCU and be what Captain America needs to be. I don't know. He might. And and like like Costa Nostra just said, I hope that he is. I hope I definitely hope that that's what it is. I hope this movie is I hope this movie is on caliber with the other uh Captain America movies. And and we won't know that until we start um until we see a trailer, until we see the movie. You know, so I'm not going to hate on it, you know. I'm just telling you my concerns that I'm concerned for this Captain America movie because it doesn't it, so far nothing about it feels like a Captain America movie to me. And, and I'm and I for one and I was I was glad Bucky didn't become the new Captain America, but he was Winter Soldier. That's he played. I mean, that's what he is. And I think there's various other reasons, <laughs> uh, moral reasons why Bucky was like, no, nah, this that's not for me. Um, when they you know when Steve handed over the shield, he knew he, Steve wasn't going to give it to him, and rightfully so. Um, but like I said, I hope this turns out to be a good movie. Well, that's, but I, I, I think I, I think a lot of the opinions start to form when you start seeing trailers to really get a sense for how this is going to look, how the story is going to play out. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, anybody else got any thoughts on uh, on Bucky not being in the movie? No, I just think they're going to set him up for Thunderbolts and some other things. I think it's fine to, you know. Like he said, like Sam needs to kind of like learn on his own real quick. But yeah, I don't really, I don't really mind either way. I, I, I feel like I feel like there's an overwhelming consensus when I when I, when I go online and I see people talking about Captain America, and this is, I guess, the thing that concerns me a little bit about it. To this day, people are still talking about Chris Evans coming back. And hoping that he comes back one day and hoping that they figure out a way to bring him back. And can they bring him back? And are they ever going to bring, you know, Captain America back? You know what I mean? And so, yeah, it's it's a testament to the fact that they had a great character in Steve Rogers in the MCU and that it really resonated with everybody. And so, like, just as in the comic book, Falcon was a was was temporary. He was never meant to be Captain America for the long haul. So it'll be interesting to see if they can actually pull this one off. If that's their intention is to just keep him as Captain America, then. I don't want to see Chris or Robert come back and play those characters again. I think they played them. I think the, the swan song they had off into the sunset for both of them was perfect. And why would you want to ruin that? I mean, especially for, for Tony Stark for, or Robert Downey Jr.'s, Tony Stark. I don't want to see him come back in any way, shape, or form. I thought the send off was perfect. Why? Why ruin it? Yeah, I do think Chris Evans will come back eventually. I think that's inevitable. But Robert Downey, I don't think he, I don't think he will. To be honest, just the way his attitude has been about <clears throat> his time as t- uh, as Tony and his time working in the MCU. I know he's grateful. I know he loved it all. But just some things that he's opened up about lately about like, you know, because he worked on Oppenheimer, which was a chance to, you know, do something really different from what he's been doing for like a decade, you know. So I think doing these more doing these movies like that, I I don't think he no, I don't think I think he's going to lose interest in any 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 talk about that at all. But Chris Evans will. He, he has nothing going for him. So he well, do we think is Chris Evans coming back as flashbacks or is he coming back as real time Captain America? Or are, we, are these going to be flashbacks to Captain America or, or multi or multiverse going back and seeing Captain America to get input or direction and then going back into the present? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, not that we know those answers. I'm just saying that's just something I would I tend to think about. Well, 
I don't I don't think he's gonna come back and be cap the the Captain America of present time. He might be the one in the past that they go back and see potentially, hmm. but not necessarily the one of, of the present. It's an interesting idea. So yeah. I'm gonna let you in, buddy, but but we're getting ready to leave, bro. Oh, my bad. Sorry. It's just I was outside. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Um but no, it's it's an interesting thing. I I uh, you know, Anthony, you can tell us real quick. Wh- what do you think of uh, of sure. them being in the Captain? I mean, it's not a surprise. I mean, he's literally. I think yeah, his next he's doing Bucky's um Stan, Stan is in um Thunderbolts with Yanel. Um, Yanel, uh, I forgot Black Widow's sister. So it makes sense why he's not in this one. Plus, I think his contract my my he only has two or three more appearances left. His contract, so he can't show up anywhere for that much. Sebastian, I mean, he's doing other things outside of Marvel, so I'm not surprised. I don't you mind think, it. You guys think they'll maybe kill off Bucky? No, 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 no. He's he's more of a side character. That's what he's been in every movie that he has been ever a part of. He's a side character that the fans love and stuff like that. Well, I just mean eventually, like eventually. Yeah. They, oh, they if, if, if they do a soft reboot, probably, probably they, he probably dies. But I don't know. Not anytime soon. I don't think. So. I, don't know. I think. I think Winter Soldier is one of the best things the MCU still has in their back pocket that they can pull out. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. I, oh, yeah, without doubt. It yeah, would 100%. Shame. It would be a shame. I would rather see honestly, honestly, I would rather see the MCU go forward without having a Captain America. Than to kill off Bucky, like let Bucky still yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, Bucky. And, yeah, Bucky's like he's still good. Like he's he's a good. He's tape. a great character oh. on his own. He doesn't need to be. He doesn't have to be Captain America to be a good character. No, he's good on his own, and yeah. he's cool on his own, and people like him on his own. So, you know, if yeah. you if if you keep him as Bucky and you just put him in there, you know, and do that. Even if even if Mackie stepped down from being Captain America, we just didn't have a, a Captain America. Yeah, I'd be good with that. But don't get rid of Bucky. Don't don't. No 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 no. Until they go back in time to the dancing scene and tell Steve Rogers, you got to come back with us. Doc right. Brown's outside. Let's go. Yeah, like I mean, he's bro. I mean, the Steve right now is in. I mean, he's a hundred. He must be old as hell. Yo. He, I mean, they haven't confirmed he died or not. The old version of Steve, the younger one, is in the past with um Peggy, um Denton, and we're probably having kids and other stuff like that. Don't so, get me started on that, Anthony. Yeah, that's 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 you know that's, my, that's you know my opinion on that. Yeah, that's that's I, that's. I, 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 I will you. say that's that's the Joe um Joe Russo Anthony. Russo thinking and yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But you know, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how these new, uh, how this next string of MCU movies are, uh, welcomed, you know? For sure. Yeah. It hasn't been doing great so far at all. It's been pretty, uh, pretty bad. Been it was, it was hit and miss for a while. And then they, they had, they had some pretty good stuff that, you know, like I liked it and it was like, okay, it wasn't as exciting as the original MCU, but it was like characters here. But then there was just so much that I didn't care about either, you know, that I was like, ah, all right. And so then I got away from having to feel like I had to, you know, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy, I enjoy Loki last season. And Me too. That's the only TV show. And enjoy a couple episodes on What If I enjoyed last season. I have not seen uh, What If. Yeah, a little. And then, I um, what else? Yeah, I enjoy Guardians and. Okay. And that's it. Yeah. So far, I'm enjoying X Men 97. And, and yeah. I have not watched Secret Invasion either. Oh, no, no, no. no there's that's no point of watching that. No, no, you, no. you don't have to. You don't have to. That's, 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 and that's I have to that, that, that one is going to get rank, rank on the shit out of the most. <laughs> Yeah, that one no. That is it. Uh, well, he's just what? Yeah, the the younger versions were pegging the past. He's chilling. He's not doing nothing. Just chilling back. Yeah, he's chilling. He's probably chilling with um Tony Stark's father, with which that's yeah. There you go. But hey. Thank you all for being here. 
I appreciate all of you guys. You guys are awesome. And uh, thank you, everyone uh, who has been here today in the chat. You guys are fantastic. Thank you to everyone who gave super chats today. It's always, uh, it's never expected, but it's always uh, appreciated. You guys are awesome for that. And uh, great panel of people. Great panel of people. Thank you guys for coming on today and talking about all this stuff with me. Um, I think that's about it. And that's about it. I'm going to go inside. It's freezing right now. It snowed so bad today. <laughs> It took me forever to get. It's early snowing over there. Wow. Oh, dude! Let me show you. I'll, I'll just t take you outside real quick. Like it is, it is crazy snowing. Like it's not even just snowing. It is like crazy, like deep snow. Well, it's getting deeper. I should say it's not super deep yet, but it's but it's getting there. It's trying. And, it's a brisk uh, eighty-two degrees here. Shut <laughs> up! Shut up! <laughs> not cool. It's about thirty-eight <laughs> degrees over here. So. Huh. Yeah, it's nice and warm and sunny in Vegas. So. Uh, Shut up, of course, the of course. Warm and sunny in Vegas. I thought it was sunny in Philadelphia. Get the beautiful, get the beautiful weather. <laughs> I thought it was always sunny. Damn, in Philadelphia. Look, it's really it's snowing. <laughs> wow. Jesus. And it still feels like Christmas with the Christmas lights up and everything. Right? The Christmas lights are up. It's snowing. Hey, I will leave. I will. I will leave them up just like that. I will not even touch them. Do you know why I left these up? Because, because you have to get you have to put, take them I've off put, and then put it back on. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's I have never much. put I have never put on uh, outside Christmas lights on a house ever. And Tiffany griped and complained so much, and I didn't like put up Christmas lights, and I didn't do this, and I didn't do that. So you know what? Screw her. I put up the Christmas lights, and <laughs> dang it, I'm gonna leave them up as long as I and, uh, long as, just leave it as long as it doesn't. I don't have a homeowners association out here. I'm just uh, by myself, and so I'm gonna take them down as soon as it warms up. But apparently, it's not warming up anytime soon. So, anyways, like I always say, don't let anybody tell you that your fandom doesn't matter, and don't tell anybody that their fandom doesn't matter. But seek to have good conversations and treat everybody with respect. And you know what? If you do that, there'll always be a place for all here. In the point Lounge. Until next time, stay nerdy, be good to each other, and. Have a good weekend. Stay, <laughs> Stay warm. warm. Stay warm. Yeah. I'm gonna go cuddle my girlfriend. All right. We'll see you later. And I'm not gonna be here when you got when the, when the thing gets done. By the way, guys, I'm gonna be like totally out. Of sure. yeah. Okay. So, sounds good, man. Well, on the flip flip side. All right. Love y'all. Bye bye. Thank you.